LC17, my boys, is looking like it may be one of the biggest, if not the biggest DLC that this game has ever seen. Because as it stands right now, we already have a ton of content revealed for this DLC pack, and we still could potentially get more. And in this video today, I also want to break down some other things that I really saw and looked at in the new 18 and Videl trailers and screenshots that we got at the same time of these characters and maybe after watching this video some of those out there who are not too happy with this DLC so far will change their mind now I tried to change people's minds on the whole ultra super villain concept because honestly I thought the whole DLC pack was going to be based around that and I personally think the ultra super villain concept is dope seeing super saiyan god ultra super villain Vegeta it looks very cool same with Rose Goku Black and then first initially when I saw that 18 and Videl were going to be DLC characters I wasn't too excited until I actually saw the trailers for these characters because their skills look absolutely fire and most likely there is more to these characters than what we actually saw in those initial 20 second trailers that we got for them. So with that being said, let's take a deeper look once again at 18 and Videl really quick guys because to me, like I said, these character skills are very dope and then also with not only reading the stuff, the information that we got on them, but also looking at some of the screenshots at the same time, I think we may have seen or I have seen some things that weren't necessarily revealed in the trailer when it comes to those screenshots in particularly. Now Android 18 though, her skills are seeming very cool. We have two skills for this character revealed so far. We got the variable snipe shot, which is this right here, where she vanishes on their opponent right above them and hits them with this key wave, right? And then we got the steel mirage. This skill right here looks absolutely fire, my boys. Like, oh, I really want to know if that skill is only going to be usable, like, up close, or will it be able to be comboed with, like, with knockdowns, knockaways, things like that, because if that's the case, that is going to be a dope skill all around, not only in terms of animation, but in terms of usage as well. Now, the variable snipe shot, though, is one of those skills that has multiple different uses to it. As you see, it says, Super Attack unleashes a flurry of high-speed uh, Kihoa Blast, Key Blast, that att this attack has multiple variations and depending on the input used can teleport 18 above her foe to deliver a, a powerful Key Blast or can even be fired uh, after a back jump. So we saw one variation of it where she vanishes of, uh, above them, right? But there's also clearly multiple variations of this skill. Now the Steel Mirage is basically what we saw. There's nothing additional that we didn't necessarily see when it comes to this attack. Basically, if you use this skill, you rush your opponent, and if it does connect, then uh, you will appear behind them and use the Destructo Disc. Now, to me, those are two fire skills right there for our CACs. I think a lot of people aren't thinking about it you know, from the CAC perspective as well, because not only will be these be characters, but the skills that they have will most likely 99% sure that they will be available for our CACs at the same time. And those were some of the things that I first thought of when I saw the skills, not only from 18, but also from Videl at the same time. So now Videl. Videl is someone or, or a character that I don't think you know, they, they really showed everything. There may see, be some additional things in this character that were like kind of shown, but not necessarily shown at the same time if he really didn't do some deep diving. Because they only explain two of her attacks in the description below. We got the Seagull combination, which focuses her strength to unleash a flurry of punches and then finishes the barrage off with a powerful kick that launches her foe up in the air. On top of that, you can increase the number of punches performed by using additional key, and you can even choose to add an unblockable spinning kick during the combo. Now, this right here, I believe this is what the spinning kick right there, that part, you know, this is the, the whole seagull combination right here that we're seeing right there, right? And then you see the kick at the end of it, right? Now, they also talk about Burning Swan, which is a key uh, energy blast that slowly moves towards the target. If charged, the movement speed and hit count for this attack can, uh, can pump up. So basically, if you charge this, the, it'll go faster, and then also it can do more hits, which also means more damage at the same time. Use it to restrict your opponent's movement options and head in to deliver some hurt. So based off of that, it also sounds like it'll have good tracking ability, and what skill they're talking about is this one right here. Now also, we do see this skill, I don't think, not, not this right here, I think this is just something she'll get like with her combos where she gets this animation and then she gets some kind of buff, right? But we do see this right here 
at the end. I don't think that's going to be part of her actual combos. I think that's going to be a skill for this character, which would put it at three skills right there, right? But then also, if you look at the screenshots down below, you see this right here that she's doing, right? This, without a doubt to me, I think is a new skill. Now, at first, you may think it's the Hadouken slash Kikoken, whatever you say, Chun-Li's version of the skill. You know, you would think it was that move, right? But I don't think so, because you see how one fist is closed right here, one fist is open, and only one fist is gathering energy in this screenshot, right? Now, let's go back to that move. I believe it's around 10 seconds. Let's see. Somewhere around here. It might be earlier. Hold on. Okay, it's earlier. Let's, let's just actually play the clip and we'll see. Okay. Now, if you slowly go through, right, with it paused, first of all, you see both palms open right here. This is the start of the attack. Both palms open. Literally, like, first frame we get of it, both palms open, both palms have key. In this one, only one palm has key, and it's not the same. This one is more surrounding farther in, like, a circular area where these are just surrounding very close to the hands, right? So let's slowly go through the frames still as we move. Now you see the palms are still open, still open, nothing really with a closed fist. The fists do not close until she comes to this action right here where she puts both her elbows like she puts her arms back, her elbows are sticking out the back, and that is not the same animation as what we're seeing right here because again, in this one, you still got a, a palm that is open. So this right here very well could be another skill that Videl has in her art Arsenal that would make it for sure three new super attacks that we saw within this trailer right here and again the character still could have more and like I said when you think about it from the CAC perspective that gets me very very excited even if you're not excited for the character herself for a as far as CACs goes these skills look very very dope and if you are someone who enjoys playing with your CAC and just you know making different builds all things along those lines I feel you should be excited for these two characters right here because it seems like they're going to be offering some very cool stuff for our CACs at the end of the day. Now, besides that, guys, this DLC is also offering the most parallel quests we've ever seen in history when it comes to this game, which makes me feel like some other things that, you know, we, we've never seen when it comes to this game are very possible. For example, a fifth character. A fifth character could actually happen in this DLC pack. I mean, having 12 parallel quests, you would think there's going to be a ton of content that has to be filled out through those parallel quests which means you know maybe we need another character to add in more skills more potential clothing items more super souls things along those lines are very possible because of the simple fact that we are getting 12 parallel quests i believe before the max we've ever seen in a dlc was like five maybe six and i don't think we've ever seen six i think it's truly five that we've seen when it comes to a dlc and parallel quest this time at minimal we are doubling the most we've ever seen on this game if not more than doubling it with 12 brand new quest which again makes me feel like there's still an additional amount of content that we have not yet seen when it comes to dlc 17 on xenoverse 2 and again we still have not seen the skills and stuff that rose goku black and vegeta will be offering in their ultra super villain form the only real thing that we've seen is that one move from vegeta that we saw in like the story um clips that was going on where vegeta puts his hands over his head and throws that like giant purplish pink key blast at goku that's the only thing we've truly seen from the man's vegeta or goku Ro uh, rose goku Goku Black in terms of actual skills. So overall, when it comes to skills, I'm predicting at minimal, we'll get like nine, maybe 10, and at most, maybe 12 to 13. Nah, I wouldn't say 13. I would say probably like 12 between these four characters alone. And if there is a fifth additional character, that's even more content at the same time. And another reason that I think it possibly could happen is because this DLC most likely has been in the works for eight nine months which would most likely be the longest a dlc has actually been cooking stirring up in a pot because before usually on this game we would go from one dlc to the next one dlc from to the next right well 
we actually got a free update last year in October instead of a DLC and in that free update when it was released in terms of the trailer we did see a teaser for DLC 17 at that point in time which means that the DLC was already in the works at that moment October 10th when we got that trailer DLC 17 had already been in the works and I'm assuming it had been getting worked on for at least a month if not a couple months at that point so I would say at minimal this DLC has been worked on for eight months and probably at most somewhere around 10 months overall in terms of just working on this DLC right here which would mean you know they're trying to make it as quality as possible and that is my hope right there for DLC 17 because I'm not gonna lie again when it comes to the skills for 18 and Videl it is looking very very good my boys like I, I cannot lie things are looking very good when it comes to th these two characters right here so let me know you guys' thoughts so far on DLC 17 down below in the comments and has this changed your mind at all when it comes to DLC 17 as well because like I said even though some people may not be excited for Videl or 18 as actual characters when it comes to what they're going to be offering for the CACs it looks like it's going to be very very good without a doubt in terms of skills and again this is not even everything Thing that these characters are most likely going to offer. I would assume that both of these characters still have a skill that we have not seen. And then, of course, we got the ultra super villain characters that we have not seen in terms of skills and potentially maybe a fifth character at the same time. And if that were to happen, this would truly be the largest DLC that Xenoverse 2 has ever seen.